Hey everyone, it's Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Thanks so much for coming by to check out another video. This is the second part in my video series on how to crush it at estate sales. If you did not get a chance to see the first part in that video series, make sure you check out the link that I put at the end of this video. That's the one on what estate sales are where to find them and why you should go to them. Now that is the one here. You could see the thumbnail in red and white. That's what it looks like. Now there will be another video that I do that talks about what types of strategies you should apply when you're actually at the sale. But this video today is about the preparation phase. What should you do in the day or days or week before the estate sale to get a leg up on the competition because often not always, but often the estate sales are posted about a week in advance. So it gives you a little bit of time to do some prep work. So let's focus on that today. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is prioritizing which sale you want to go to first and how to plan a route. Now it's really going to depend on what time of year you're doing this. So for example, last week, if you remember the haul video that I posted here, the volcanic sourcing day, you could see there it says four estate sales in one day. That's what I had to go to. That's what I had to plan out. There were no garage sales because we're in the dead of winter time. Now in the summertime and the spring and even the fall, I'm going to have to figure out how to navigate between a whole set of garage sales, rummage sales. Um, you know, if you like to go to auctions, those might be available. Flea market, you're really going to have to balance those things out in addition to multiple estate sales. There's just so much time in a day. So how do you pick? Uh, first thing I would tell you, unless you had a lead, if there were competing garage sales happening, unless you had a lead on an absolutely amazing garage sale based on pictures, I would start with the estate sale every time because I, I mentioned this last time, but the way to look at an, at an estate sale, even though for some people who haven't gone to one before, it sort of has this mysterious aura to it. Think of it as a giant garage sale just you know multiplied times you know the normal stuff that you would find at your regular garage sale because you're not just limited to the garage and what people will put out on the driveway you have reign of pretty much the entire house so uh you know i i talk about being efficient and that's one way to be efficient is to just have as much stuff available in one particular location now it helps to know that the house is packed so one key word to look for when you're searching for estate sales is if they call it a pick and pull sale. If I ever see it say pick and pull, I am putting that one at the top of the list. So what that means is that there's so much stuff at the sale that the estate sale dealer cannot even price all of it. So sometimes you'll see like price stickers and price labels on things. But pick and pull means the state sale dealer is pretty much overwhelmed and you just pretty much get to go in there and you know sort through things, pick things yourself, put in a box, go up and they'll price it out and often you're going to get liquidated uh, prices. So that is often a good sign. Now what's a bad sign is if you go to look at estate uh, sale pictures and what you see are just a few items in the room and you could sometimes zoom up on that price sticker and when you zoom up on it, you see some crazy price on it. That is a bad sign. So on one like that, you may want to wait to go until the end when prices are discounted. Like you remember at the Volcanic Sourcing Day video, I purposely went at the end uh, because that person doesn't haggle, but he does allow for uh, half price on some items at the and reduced prices at the end of the sale. So for him, it's uh, and see everyone's different. For that guy, it's half price on any item that's twenty-five dollars or less, and then uh, after that, if it's above twenty-five dollars, then he could give you. Uh, a different deal but during the regular uh, sale time he doesn't allow for any negotiation so it just depends everyone's different some places will say everything 50% off or you know everything at the last hour just come negotiate a price with me and you know so it, ju it just depends so uh, other things you want to look for in terms of prioritizing is uh, geographic location so if you could find one that is close to you and looks good based on the pictures then that's one that I would suggest going to as long as if it's 
uh, by a dealer who you know is good. Now, if you don't know and you are just starting out going to estate sales in your area, you have no idea which estate sales sealer, uh, sorry, dealers are the best ones, uh, then you're just going to have to learn that by trial and error. And that's okay. That's just, you know, part of the game. That's something that you have to do in the beginning. But you're going to figure that out real fast and you're going to know which people to look for. So once you figure that out, if you know that your favorite estate sale dealer is having an estate sale that starts a half an hour away from you, then go out to that one first, start there, and then work your way back to where uh, your wherever your headquarters is, wherever your house is or your business, and uh, you know try to go to whatever the best other sales are in that area, and then just kind of work your way back. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, you could go to Yard Sale Treasure Map here, and you can actually plan a route. Um, if you had the chance to do some prep work in advance and look at the you know types of sales that you want to go to, and this will pull up any garage sale and estate sale on Craigslist. Now, if it's not on Craigslist, it's not going to show up on Yard Sale Treasure Map, so you're just going to have to factor that in yourself in terms of uh, how to plan things out. Now, um, another thing I would do is, in addition to looking at uh, uh, pictures, so for you know, for example, let's go. Um, let's go over here, and um, you know, here's some pictures here that you're going to look for. And you know, pictures are important, but in, in addition to just the the photos, I mean, you also want to look at the descriptions. You know, we talked about that last time. And are there you know keywords that are jumping out at you? So, for example, you know, if you're looking for you know beer material, and you see that it says there's uh, this is from uh, items from an Anheuser Anheuser-Busch rep, well, that's going to jump out to you and you're going to probably prioritize that. Or if you're ha if you happen to be looking for neon signs and clocks and that type of stuff, well, guess what? You're going to put that in your priority list. If this is uh, you know, here it says there's hinged crates. If you like to get those types of things, crates or if you like silverware, then, you know, or golf items, you know, you that's what you're going to look for. You're going to look in that description section and you're going to try to figure out, okay, you know, is which sale has the most stuff that looks like I know the most about, that I know how to source, and that I could do well in terms of trying to flip it. Uh, another thing you're going to want to do is look for uh, items that look like they're old because vintage items sell very well. So if you could find uh, in the description section, now this one doesn't have it, but sometimes what it'll say, look for the word accumulation. So if it says there's 40 years of accumulation or 50 or 60, sometimes I've even seen, believe it or not, it'll say over 100 years of accumulation. When I see that and I'm looking and they'll put it in the description section or sometimes they'll put it in the title, over 100 years of accumulation, that means that there's multiple generations worth of stuff in that house. That puts it high up on the list for me in terms of a uh, one that I want to go to. And if it's a really busy weekend where let's say there might be seven estate sales to go to, you have to be comfortable telling yourself you're you can't go to all of them and that you're prioritizing based on which ones are the best because some of them will be duds. Like if you remember last week the second estate sale that I went to was this one right here. Now I said it at the time that I did the last video, so if you if you saw that one, this is going to look familiar to you, and if you saw my haul video, this is the second house I went to, and there was nothing inside that house. Now, here is what they described was there, and I told you it was a risk when you show up to a house that doesn't have pictures and it just has a verbal description. It could be good, could be bad. I took the chance because it you know, wasn't far from where I was at that first sale and it was kind of on the way to the other ones. Um, so I was in and out of there pretty quick, but this may be one that you put lower on your list if you have a ton of other garage sales and a ton of other things to do. You may put this one lower because there's no pictures inside the house. So it really depends in terms of whether or not you're going to take a shot at one like this in terms of how geographically close it is to where you are at. So uh, that's another thing. Also, you know, as I kind of mentioned earlier, Focus also on which estate sale dealer is the one that you know gives you the best deals. Uh, that is, to me, really 
number one or pretty close to number one in terms of where I'm going to go. It's really a combination of the pictures and the estate sale dealer. Now, sometimes even your favorite estate sale dealer will wind up with a sale that just isn't good. And because of that, you may choose to go to another one that looks packed. But probably should just stop off of that one from your favorite estate sale dealer anyway at some point, even if you put it last on your route, just to make it known that you are supporting uh, that dealer. Because trust me, the estate sale dealers, they know their customers and they appreciate loyalty and they give you deals as a result of that. I can't reinforce that enough for you. So prioritizing based on all those factors and then trying to plan an efficient route in terms of where to go, that is very important. Now, another thing that's very important in terms of preparation is making sure you have enough cash. M most estate sale dealers prefer to deal in cash. Now, some will take credit card and some will take check, but not all of them will. And the ones that do will often charge some type of fee to offset the fee that they're getting hit with by the credit card company. So they're going to pass that on to you. Uh, and they also might charge a convenience fee for using a check because they run the risk of the check bouncing. Now, they may be willing to cut you a deal with the checks if they know you very well. But if you're a first timer or you haven't been there too many times, they don't know you very well then they may charge you that fee for writing the check. So cash is important. I would suggest that you bring around $100 if you just know you're going to one sale. Now, you're not always going to spend that much, but you want to just have the flexibility so you don't feel so limited, so you have the options available. Like if you remember the, uh, the first sale I went to a few weeks ago, I spent uh, $53 on that sale. Now, the first sale I went to last week, I spent $14.50. So it just depends. Now, if you have a whole day that you're going to go out um, you know, hunting for items, I suggest bringing around $200 cash with you. Uh, and obviously, you don't want to flash that around so that everyone knows that. But you, you don't. here's the thing. You don't want to be having to keep going to different uh, ATMs because that's taking time away from you. And sometimes it's literally just that extra second or extra minute that you might have needed to get to that item before your competition does. So you want to have all that stuff prepared in advance. Another thing you want to prepare in advance is you need to know how far it is that you have to drive that day, also planning that you have to drive back, but you need to make sure you have enough gas. I can't emphasize that enough. Yesterday, somebody that I know was on their way to a doctor in freezing cold weather here in Syracuse and had to stop and couldn't make the trip because the person ran out of gas. So. Someone told me this once, and this is a, a saying I have remembered my entire life, so I will pass it on to you. Well, I shouldn't say entire life because I heard it when I was a young adult, but um, it was never be in such a rush to get somewhere that you don't stop to get gas in advance. So uh, that's important because a lot of times people will get involved in something and they don't do the things necessary to prepare themselves to be successful at it. So, you know, what's the point in rushing around and, uh, you know, trying to get somewhere if you don't have the gas to get you there. So make sure you fill up with gas and, um, you know, prepare yourself adequately to get to where it is that you need to go because you don't want to get stranded or even if you recognize in advance the day of, you don't want to be stopped off somewhere trying to fill up with gas while everyone else is going into the house getting items before you when you could have gotten there on time. So very important, make sure you fill up uh, with the gas. Now, the next part is the sign-up sheet and I've showed this to you at some estate sales that I've gone to the day before. but. Uh, most estate sales will have what's called a sign-up list, and if and this is one of the things that gets people nervous because they don't know what it means. Is when, in fact, let's go to a listing right here, and I'll show it to you. I'm going to open up the one that is from this weekend. So this one is from February 3rd, and you could see here. Now it's small print, but I'll try to highlight it here for you. It says sign up and leave a, a Saturday, 2 p.m return on Sunday by 10.45 a.m. So the sale is on February 3rd, but it says sign up and leave on Saturday at 2 p.m. A lot of people get confused with that. What does that mean? And as a result, they, they just get nervous and they don't go because it sounds complicated that there's a sign up list. It's very simple. 
Okay, when you go to, the, for this one, that's going to be on February 3rd. On February 2nd, what's going to happen is the one of the estate sale dealer representatives is going to show up at that house, and at the front door, they are going to either be standing there, or they are just going to put a list with a pen, and it's just going to look like this, or it's going to be a, a couple pieces of paper that are taped to the wall, and it's just going to be numbered down, one, two, three, four, five, all the way down. They'll probably have like a hundred on there. And if they run out of numbers, you just add them on yourself. And all you do is you put your name on the list. Now, the reason for doing that is it's the, a fair way for estate sale dealers to allocate who's going to get to go into the sale the day of. So uh, they'll call out number one, Bob, number two, Joe, number three, Sally, number four, Esme, if you're watching. So I'm just shouting out people who follow the channel. Um, so you got to uh, decide whether or not it makes sense to get on that list. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Now you don't, I talked about this in, I believe the last video or two videos ago, you don't always have to be first on the list or you don't even have to be always in that first wave. I mean, if it's a really great estate sale, if it's one that looks like it's packed with items, then yeah, you really do want to try to get in on that first wave. Uh, that's what I did for uh, this sale over here if uh, if it shows up. I don't know if, it, yeah, this one here with the, uh, the person who was selling the uh, Anheuser-Busch stuff uh, in the snowstorm. I got there a day, the day before. I was number 16 because I wanted to get in on that first wave so I could get some of these items, and it wasn't too far away from me. But let's say this sale was 45 minutes away or 40 minutes away, and there was no time during the week where I was going to be anywhere close to it. Would I go out there in advance and put my name on that list Chances are no. I mean, it would have to be absolutely amazing. I would have had to seen things in this picture that just you know blew me away that I knew I had to absolutely get that would make me do that. I mean, so that would be rare. I tend to reserve it for ones that I know I could get to without wasting a lot of gas money. And, uh, you know, so I could get on that list and then uh, get there the next day. Now, one advantage of doing that is when you go out to the sale the day before, uh, that gives you uh, a, a better sense on where the sale is. So that day of the sale, if you're in an unfamiliar area, then you know how to get to it quicker. Now, usually there's signs posted all over the place that direct you to where to go. So it shouldn't be that much of a problem, especially if you have a GPS. Uh, but... It's uh, definitely something to uh, something to consider doing is getting up uh, on that list. Now, as I mentioned in the uh, last video, you do not have to be first on the list. As long as you get in during that first wave, uh, that's really the most important thing. And usually, uh, depending on the size of the house, uh, that will indicate how many people they let in at once. Usually they let in at least 20 or so, but if it's a real tiny house, they may only let in 10. Uh, if it's a bigger house, they may let in 30 to 40. There are other sales, by the way, which I've gone to the day before. I've put my name on the list. I show up to the sale, and they either don't follow the list, which is frustrating, uh, or they just say, all right, there's not that many people here. We're just going to open the door and let everyone in. So sometimes that happens, that could be frustrated. You just have to roll with it. You just have to go with it. Again, once you get a sense of the different estate sale dealers in your area, you'll know how much they do or do not follow that list, uh, list to the T. Now, another thing I should mention, just because I see it here in terms of prep, is uh, you, know, you do have the opportunity to look at some of these items in advance and do some comp research on it. Like, let's take this one, for example. This is obviously the highlight piece that they're putting up for this sale to draw people to it. It's the Soyo Supreme Gas Globe. Now, you could look this up in advance very easily. And trust me, if you're not doing it, your competition is. So all you have to do is you just type this into eBay. You go into the completed solds right here. And you could see here there are a bunch of people who've tried to sell this for $130. It didn't sell. But someone was able to sell one with a black rim for $100, had 13 bids, so it tells you there is interest in it. Um, it's good that it has the name Supreme on it, which kind of links it a little bit to that uh, Supreme clothing line. Uh, you've got uh, 1160 shipping on it, so over $100 
Uh, it's big and it's glass, and so as a result of that, it's going to need a lot of protection, and so there's going to be some bulk to the box. So you could figure that shipping is going to be a little pricey on it. Uh, you could then look and see, well, is there anyone selling it now? Well, there's one person selling it now, but it's red. It's not exactly the same. Red's going to probably be, be more desirable than the white. So this one has it at $110. So you know you're probably going to have to list it at around 100 if you pick this one up. So these are the kind of things you should have in your head. So when you go to that sale and you look at what the price is on it, does it make sense to purchase? Now I'll tell you, when I went there, now someone had already purchased that, but I know what the price on it was. The price was $50. If I would have got there first, would I have picked that up for $50? No. It wouldn't have been worth it for $50 because, again, once you factor in the shipping and all the time you have to spend packing something like that, there's risk of breakage during a, you know putting it in the mail. Not a good deal for reselling business if you are shipping online. Now, if you have a, a store uh, it, you know, may make sense to pick it up for 50. When I say a store, I mean an actual brick and mortar store. Uh, that could make sense, but uh, most of you don't have that, and you're just uh, shipping online. Now, that $50, by the way, is a good deal for somebody who collects those types of globes and just wants one for their collection. So remember, you're not just dealing with resellers at these sales. You're dealing with the you know, average person who's not a reseller who wants to pick up some cool items for their collection. And $50 for that is a great deal. That's about half the price that you're going to find on eBay. So, you know, the estate sale dealers, remember, they're catering to different people. Now, you may not have time to do this research in advance, and I'm not telling you you always have to. You don't have to research every item, but, you know, it, you you could at least get a, try to get a leg up on your competition by you know, knowing some prices in your head for some of the items in the room. This way, when you go there, you don't have to look up so many comps. So uh, the other thing you could do is you could get a sense of a room that may have something in general that you want to get. Like, let's say, for example, uh, we'll make this a little bigger here. Let's say, for example, I want to get this crate. Now, this crate I actually purchased. If you remember from the estate sale video, I purchased this one right here. Now, let's say I was, oh, and by the way, there's the lamp. There's the famous lamp right there that I bought. So you remember I got that right at the end? Funny, no one else picked that up. But um, uh, And it happened to be right in this location. This lamp was right down here on the floor. And this one was right over here a bit. So uh, what you could do is you could get a sense of what the room looks like. And you could try to get a sense of what floor it looks like it's on. Like you could see some snow in the background. So you notice it's got to be on the first level somewhere. You know, it looks like it's, you know, part of a room where, you know, there's, um, uh, you know, like a, maybe a fireplace in it or something like that. So, you, know, you get, you see there's lots of mugs there. So, you just have that in your mind. Like, if these are the top two items you want to get, you say to yourself, all right, I'm going to focus on trying to find that room. And I've done that before. I remember once I bought this really big map that I actually wound up getting called to go on Pawn Stars for. And I, I never went on, but that's a whole other story. But uh, I, I got there. I was number 10 in line or something like that. And I knew it was up, had to be upstairs. And in fact, the day of the sale, and this is jumping ahead to next video, but I actually asked once I got there, I said, hey, you know, because I knew the dealer, I said, can you tell me where that map is, which room it's in? And uh, they actually weren't they actually weren't sure. They didn't really remember. Uh, but you sometimes they could give you a heads up and tell you, hey, you know, what you're looking for is in that room over there and that room over there. But I knew it was upstairs, so I ran up the stairs, and fortunately, the first room that I went to had the map in it. And I actually have that on video. It's one of my older haul videos. But it was this giant uh, map from 1942. It was awesome. So I picked it up, and that was totally from doing a research in advance and I'm glad I grabbed it because there were people right behind me that wanted that uh, that wanted that map so that's an important thing to do is uh, you know if you can is try to do a little prep work in advance in terms of you know researching some of the items and that's why you know having pictures are, are good you know now the uh, the bad thing about having pictures again is your competition is doing the same exact thing so uh, that's why if you wanna if you wanna beat them on a popular item that's when it becomes important to get there uh, earlier on the list and to try to uh, focus on which item it is that is most important to you and try in your best to get uh, to get right to it so uh, that's that in terms of the uh, uh, some things related to the prep phase. I think we wrapped up pretty much talking about that uh, sign up list. Um, more often than not, uh, you know, if there's multiple estate sales during the day, you're you're 
that start around the same time, you're going to have to choose which sign-up list you want to go on to because it doesn't make sense to go on multiple sign-up lists. So just keep that in mind. If you have three estate sales or even two estate sales starting at 9 o'clock, you've got to choose which one you want to focus on and then which one you want to go on the sign-up list for because going on multiple sign-up lists makes no sense. Once, once they get through the people on that list, then the next people just start rolling in. So a uh, couple other things to talk to you about prep before we wrap this video up is you want to make sure that you have boxes with you. And you'll see me uh, show this sometimes in my trunk, but here's a big box that I have right here. I suggest having a big box with you and then within it, have another box like so within this big box you'll see here I have another box I just got to get it out of these flaps here I have another one within it and as the season gets crazier I'll put even more and more boxes in there and the, the reason for that is that once this box over here fills up okay then I still have all the room from this box to put things in and I could just put this one right on top and balance it right on top and walk around because remember at estate sales there's lots of stuff and you don't want to be in the situation where you have all this stuff in your hands and now you have nowhere to put it and you have to keep moving from room to room to room now it's interesting to me that when I show up to estate sales I am often the only person that brings a box uh, now, sometimes someone else will, but it's rare. And sometimes people will say something. Oh, I brought a box. Oh, I brought a box. Yeah, I brought a box. And I brought multiple boxes. And you're going to see later on why I brought that box. And it's funny because, you know, people wind up getting stuck because they don't have something to carry it in. Now, another thing you could do if you don't want to carry around tons of boxes is also put a bunch of uh, shopping bags inside. So you just carry them inside and the advantage of having the shopping bags inside like from the grocery store is that they add no weight to your items that you have to carry around with and they're optional to take out and fill up with stuff as you're going and then you could just carry the bags around. Um, and you know, you could put five, six, seven, eight, no, 10 bags in there just depending on like if you're going to go to a big pick and pull sale, I mean you've seen some of the estate sale videos, I mean I have stuff piled up waiting at the uh, uh, checkout area for me and then I go back and start finding other items in the sale because if you get to a certain point there's just so much stuff you can't even carry all that around you need to dump it somewhere and then go back with extra boxes and so if it's a really really uh, you know big day of estate sales you might want to even keep some extra boxes uh, in your uh, uh, in your car that you could go out and grab later but oftentimes you'll oftentimes you'll actually find there there could be a box or two at the actual sale that you could pick but you can't count on that and that's why I tell you you have to bring boxes with you uh, at the sale and don't feel ashamed to bring it and let people see that you have a box who cares bring the boxes it's trust me you're gonna thank me for it uh, um, if you uh, weren't planning on doing that and the last thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a little bag with you like this that is filled with tools and items that you could use at the sale one of the most important things to have in here are batteries because you are going to run across things that require a C battery you're going to uh, come across things that require D batteries you're going to come across things that require 9 volt batteries and so on and so forth and you can see here within the bag I have a bunch of other smaller batteries double A's triple A's and if you come across sales where you know I came across one once where there was a uh, uh, item that needed to be tested with an Energizer 2032. Well, I didn't have it at the time, so I went out and got it. So now I have it for other sales. You want to have things like uh, cassette tapes like this. Uh, so have a cassette tape that you have ready that you could play out uh, cassette players. Have a track ready with you. Have things like, um, you know, a, a socket wrench uh, with you. You have all sorts of things that you could fit uh, in this bag. Um, there's things like uh, tape measures. You're going to want to uh, measure things in terms of, uh, you know, what the what the what the height is. So, for example, you know, if you're looking at a uh, plush dolls, for example, and there's different um, heights of plush dolls, and the same doll 
uh, could have different heights in terms of the comps, and you're not exactly sure based on eyeing it, is this the one that's 12 inches or 14 inches? Well, having something like this could be real important in terms of, uh, in terms of doing that measurement. So there's, there's things like that. I actually have a whole video here, uh, and I'll link to it down below in the description section. It says, full reveal, the tools I use to crush it at estate sales and garage sales. So go to that video if you want to see more. But uh, you know, other things I'll tell you just real quick that you should definitely have are screwdrivers. Take these little small screwdrivers. They're really helpful. This is one of the most important things I could tell you to bring is a screwdriver because there are items that are attached to the walls that you could take off with screwdrivers. Make sure you have a Phillips head and a flat head and also make sure you have a chisel with you because sometimes you need to chisel things off at estate sales. Um, that could be really helpful as well. Uh, have things like um, you know um, a power adapter um, you know that you could plug into the wall like the, the DC um, connector here so that you could connect certain um, certain electronic items into into the wall and see whether or not it powers on. You could often ironically pick those up at estate sales and just throw it in and you know get it practically for free or for 25 cents or 50 cents and then you could use it to go out and test things. So those are all the things you want to do in the prep phase. Uh, those are the main things that I could think of. Uh, if there's something you have in terms of another idea that you use yourself for estate sale prep, be sure to let me know that down in the uh, in the description, not description section, in the comment section. Um, or if you have questions, let me know that as well uh, in the comment section down below. As you know, I love to hear all your comments and questions. I try to respond to as many of them uh, as I can. Um, there will be, as I said, another video where I go over and talk about strategies to actually use at the, at the actual estate sale. So stay tuned for that one. Check out all the other videos, over 300 videos on this channel now, all designed to help you in your reselling business. Make sure you give this video a big giant like if you liked it, if you enjoyed it, pass it on to others if you feel that it could be helpful to other resellers that you know. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Very, very important as we continue to try to grow. Uh, also, uh, put on your calendars that I have a, um, a, an interview set with uh, Star from Flippin' Hippos on February 6th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you also go check out my interview with the Craigslist Hunter. That has gotten a lot of positive reviews. That was a great time, an hour-long interview with um, you know an absolute elite elite uh, reseller and um, you know and business person. So absolutely go check that out. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. And stop by and join my Facebook group if you're not a member. It's the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The link's down below in the description section. I'll see everyone at the next video. Take care, everyone.